This is North East Boxing Blows. I'm your host, Francis Crows. Today I'm joined by Calgary's managed Grimsey's own Levi Giles. Levi had a 54 amateur fight career, winning a Midlands title for 10 and pressed up in 2017, where he's had, currently got 15 fights on his record, 14 wins and one defeat. How are you doing, Levi, mate? You okay? Yeah, I'm fantastic, mate. Yeah, I'm a week out now <clears throat> before I uh, challenge for the Commonwealth Silver title. Um, so, yeah, you, you know what it's like yourself this last week. I'm just getting um, getting rid of the water weight and um, just enjoying what's been a fantastic camp ready for next Friday. So, before we go on to that Silver Commonwealth Masters title fight, isn't it? Yeah. Before we go on that, mate, do you want to go back to the beginning, like your childhood? Why you got into boxing in the first place? <clears throat> so... The reason, mate, I got into um, boxing in in the first place was because I tried a lot of other sports at a young age when I was like six and seven. You know, I tried football and I let my mum buy me all the gear and then I'd, then I'd stop after a couple of games and I tried the same with like kickboxing and karate. You know, I'd, I'd do it and then let my mum buy all the gear and my dad. And then um, with the boxing, I said, oh, you know, I want to try boxing. Um, so I went down to what was Grimsby ABC, which I'm still at now. <clears throat> 18 years ago I was nine years old at the time and I went down I said oh you know this will be for me and my mum went right this time we're not going out and buying you all the gear you can wait for a bit but I just knew mate as soon as I walked in that gym they had a different feel about it um and to be honest it's the re it's kept me off going off the rails and stuff like that. it's kept me on the straight and narrow and yeah boxing mate it's fantastic um and that's it's really it's a good it? yeah especially it's, it's it's huge mate i mean boxing it, it helps you know it, i don't I, i've never actually spoke to someone that said oh i've tried boxing and it's it's done any negatives from it it's always positives yeah. mate you know i'd recommend it to anyone that's suffering even mentally uh, physically any, any reason i think you know the, the only place in a boxing gym is the only place you're going to see convicts mixing with police officers and yeah, yeah it is in it, it, any it was welcome to anybody male female anybody did you get in much trouble like Levi like, growing up? Say again, buddy. Did you get in much trouble around your way growing up, like? Um, I mean, I mate. Um, <clears throat> so it was just, it was your typical council estate, you know. We didn't have much. Um, but yeah, you, you got the you got everything. No, I mean to be honest, with you, crime right now is probably as highest, isn't it? You know, anywhere. But yeah, you yeah. see, your typical council estate, mate. We didn't. I come from not much. Um, my mum and dad worked hard and stuff like that, but they, you know, they really struggled. And just like all my group of mates, they were all mums and dad struggled. But it, it's it kind of makes us what we are today, you know. So you appreciate things a lot more. Um, builds nothing... character, doesn't it? Builds character, doesn't it, more than someone? Yeah, of course it does, mate. Character building, definitely. Um, and I think some of your best, some of the best fighters in the world come from nothing. Um, that if, you know, I've met a lot of I've met a lot of fighters, and I'm sure you have as well. And there's not really many world champions and class fighters that have come from backgrounds where the you know kind of say no, spoon easy where this life. The only one I can think of is Oscar De La Hoya. He had, he come from a good background, didn't he? I think but Devin Ainey. Devin Ainey's come from a good background as well, but he's, I think it's it's really um, it's really rare, mate. I'd, you know, it's probably one in one in twenty world champions that come from that kind oh, of background. I'd say not, not less than that, mate. It's a very low percentage, it really is. So what old were you in your first amateur fight? I was um <clears throat> I just well I, I went in the gym at nine and obviously you couldn't fight till ten then. Uh, there weren't no there weren't really any skills bouts or anything but I had my first fight at ten in uh Scumfort. Yeah my first first amateur fight at ten years old at in Scumfort. Were you nervous? What were the feelings like can you remember it? You know what, mate? I never actually went to a boxing show, so I, I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. I watched, you know, I watched a bit of TV in that, but I didn't really know what to expect. And you go into this like sports hall, um, and you're like, wow, you know what I mean? It's a bit, it's a bit surreal, really. Um, it's like it's the first about it is a pro debut. It's the same. It's a bit, it's a bit surreal. So uh, when you, uh, how many, how many did you fight? You had fifty four, didn't you? Won the Midlands title. Did you fight? Did you go in the senior every years in that? I went in the <clears throat> I went in the senior ABAs. Um, I only went in them once. I went in the C I went in the senior ABAs once, mate. Yeah, right. Um, to be honest with you, I, I went in the ABAs three times. One as a schoolboy, one as a junior, and one as a uh, senior. And the three lads that beat me in the first round, um, I think I was a bit hard done to on the decisions. You know, you know, you said what amateur boxing is like. Um, I've gone back and beat all of them. 
Um, in, oh, yeah, in, you beat them in a return fight, yeah. Yeah, they did, but they, and they went on to do really well. So, but like, like his styles make fights, you know. I, I never really, I won't really, you know, robberies and stuff. You get a lot. Of, there's a lot of close fights as amateur, mate. I mean, if you go through my record, a lot of them was majority losses, you know. Who's the best <clears> person you box in amateur life, Levi? Um, I boxed a lot of good kids, mate. Um, Shabazz Masood's a good kid. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, looking in nice. He's doing really well. He he was a good kid. Tom Hodgson he, he is another good kid. Um, Brad Dawes, the, the, probably Stephen Rolfe. Actually, that being said, Stephen Rolfe was a re- was a really good kid from Retford. He was he was probably one of the best kids I boxed. They all go down that way. There's a big community, and they make they get a lot of fights and a lot of calls. Yeah, there's, I mean, you might know Tom Hodgson and that. You know, he's from uh, he's from like your way on, so he's doing quite well himself. He's a nice kid, and all. A lot of them I stay in contact with me. There aren't really many people in boxing that you meet and think. You know they're not every they're only they're all nice lads. You know, I think what it is, mate, when you've been in there with them, share the room with them. Yeah, need to be respectful. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a brave man's sport. You know what I mean? It's not for the weak. So you kind of you have nothing but respect for your opponent after a fight. In oh, my opinion, mate, there aren't many people. You know what? I've other 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 than that Gomez fight, mate. I've seen. I've never come across any people that you've looked at and not really disliked. At the end of the day, it's just business. Um, you, you, you can't say you want to, you're not there to make, you know, you're not there to make pals with people, but they, you've got to respect them because they're doing oh, the same do. as you're doing. Um, and especially when you get to this title level and, you know, I know, you know, even with this Najib that I'm going to be fighting, I know he'll be living, you know, he's doing what he can to make sure he, he comes and gives it his best shot and I'm doing what I am. So you've got to respect that. But then you you put that to a side for 10 rounds. Well, me, for, the, for the 10 rounds in the ring, it's it's completely out the window. But after that, he's just the same as you and he's doing the same job as you. Hundred percent. You know you're saying you, you know you've done it yourself. It's it's just business. It's exactly what it is, mate. And you want at the end of the day, he's that he's coming from somewhere, you're coming from somewhere like he's both one because it's going to fair for your careers. You know what I mean? It's nothing personal. It's just business. Like yeah, of course it is. That's but all you, it is. And with something on the line, it just makes it that bit more spicy, you not it? It's going to be good. <laughs> you turn fresh in 2017, Levi. You yeah. Oh, uh, you thirty fourteen and all when you when you box Levi. Um, Two I don't know what happened there, mate. I can I can still hear you though. <clears throat> Back, mate. Like, I think they'll cut it out when I record it. Um, but you're 40 you know when you box you took the step up and box Michael Gomez Jr. And I think you proved yourself that night, mate. I was, I had you winning by two rounds in that fight. I think you bossed the first half of the fight and you let him get a bit close in the last second half of the fight, but you still did enough to win that fight. What's your intake on that? Um, I'm never one, you know. I'm never one to. I ain't actually sit there me saying and said robbery. I want. Um, I want use robbery as a word. I, I thought I did enough. I did. I, I thought I did enough on the night. And when I watched it back, I thought I did enough. But it won't. The um, I could come up with plenty of excuses, mate. You know that wasn't the best camp we've had today. Um, nothing ever goes smoothly. But the um, end result is I took that fight on five weeks. We was told that it's going to be a lot later. And um, we actually only had five and a half weeks, and yeah, we, we we was we was flying in camp, and what happened was, Carl said to me, "Oh, look, they've said that you're definitely not going to be boxing on Sky now. You're going to be boxing him on April 22nd at Oldham uh, Leisure Centre." So I said, "Yeah, okay." So me and my team sat down, and they said, "Right, <clears throat> go and have a week off now. Go and have a week off. We've been training really hard. Um, the fight's not till April now." So, yeah, definitely, you know, as good as. And then the back end of this week off, I've had, you know, I've enjoyed a nice um, a week off, you know, as you do. I was training really hard up till then. So, yeah, I was enjoying, I was enjoying my food and stuff like that. I went up to what I normally go up to when I'm walking around, which is like 11 stone with no training. I'm walking about and Cal rings and says, um, oh, yeah, mate, you've got uh, five and a half weeks. So, yeah, we had to we had to do what we had to do to make we'll, it work. We pulled the fast one there. I remember obviously stop your momentum and come. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't know if it was a thing where they, they they knew about it or not, but I'm not using that as an excuse, mate. Michael got the win. Yeah, and you know, it, uh, there's no point. Obviously, the fight's being done. You should have won by two rounds. To me, is there any like have you come close to getting the rematch in that fight? Or I've asked for it personally. I have asked for it. Um, apparently, you know, we don't do rematches or something. I, I don't know that he's a strange character, mate. I respect him as he a fighter. He doesn't fight, do right? rematches. What do you mean? He, apparently he's done some interviews saying he don't, you know, it's all backward steps for it if he rematches or you know he'd go rematch other people and stuff. And I'm, it's just over, it's just sort of going over me head. I'm like, you know what, mate? You know, at the end like, of the day, what I want. 
I respect I respect the man as a fighter. He's a good fighter. And he's good to watch. You know what I mean? So I'm not getting yeah, anything away from what's there. You go. He's not Floyd Mayweather. No, he's no. And this is the issue. At the end of the day, it was an English title, and the way he carries himself, mate. I don't need to sit here and I don't need to slag the man off because. I think people already have seen you know the the way Michael is. It's um, <clears throat> it, that's just the way he is. And like he said, like he says, it puts people on seats. So whether they want to watch him win or lose, it, it, people are going to tune in and watch him. You know, probably most of them to see him get beat. But that's just the way he carries yeah. himself off in it. And some people can do it like your McGregor's, and that way you watch him and think, yeah, it's, you know what, he's good at doing it. But I just don't feel like um, well, I, don't, I feel like he's creating a lot McGregor, of energy. Mate, it's, an act, it's an act, isn't it? Yeah, you, you can either carry yourself off like that or you can't. And I feel like he, he tries to, but he can't, you know. <clears throat> Is he a different man off camera, Michael Bonas? I've, yeah, when I spoke to him off the camera, mate, he was, you know, he was sound after the fight and that. Um, so it's like a persona he's doing to sell tickets to me. It looks like, you know, it comes across that way, mate, because after the fight, he was different. But like, Gary, um, I spoke to um, the Welsh geezer, the pocket rocket. Um, Gary Welsh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gary, uh, Gary Lockett. Sorry. Yeah, Gary Lockett, yeah. And he was and he said, nah, he, you know what I mean? He's only like because he's won and stuff like that. And he probably he is probably right, mate. But at the end of the day, it's boxing. I respect Michael as a fighter, but as a person, you know, I, I can't really I can't really say the respects there. No, he's after what he did at the way and you know, it tried to um yeah, Pete, a lot of people well, got injured there, so you can you push is that <clears> when you push your flying? Now, mate, Carl rang me and wanted to pull the fight. Um, he said, nah, I'm not having this. He, you know, it was disgusting. There, there ain't no back and forth there between you. You haven't spoke about him. You don't, I don't even know him. I, I didn't know him before the fight. I didn't know who he was. And I didn't, I, I don't it was really just know. Blue, it? You, it you, you weren't expected. You were stood square on. So you're going to go flying when you stood square on, mate? I was, yeah. So I going to cause you an injury for a fight, though. Yeah, I was. It's dangerous, isn't it? You know, but. Um, I'll stand there in my stance next time. But to be honest with you, mate, the weight, the, the weight and stuff, the way I did, the way I had to, I had to do the weight, it won. And then I come in too light, and it's just all learning experiences, and everything happens for a reason, mate. And to be honest how with you, we've leveled it. How did you cut the weight, Levi? Did you scratch diet? Mate, it was, yeah, oh, it was the worst way I've made weight. I mean, because we had five and a half weeks, and in my head, I mean, although now I'm like, well, looking back, I should have probably just said, now I'll just fight him on his own show. But everything happens for a reason, yeah. mate. And it made, to be honest, it made us that night. Um, so I'm kind of glad. Proved it, yourself at, you proved yourself oh, at that level and flew a lot of it all. Yeah, I've I just gained so much. I gained so many followers and the support's grown massively. I've had so many people, you know, even say, oh, I thought you won the fight and stuff. And it made taking a loss a bit easier, you know. And I was straight back well, in the gym. We've got another fight game. You won the fight in a lot of people's opinions, mate. In real boxing, the judging, you did win the fight, but on the record yeah. and history, which is close down to your loss. But it is a moral win, isn't it? Knowing that you did should have got the win and a lot of people agree with you there. Oh, you boxed brilliant, mate. You proved yourself. I think a lot of people were expecting you to cave in that night, weren't they? And it would stop you in a few rounds. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't, at the end of the day, is I'm, I'm, I'll take when you when you talk about Michael's boxing ability is um yeah his IQ is not massive and he does come forward but what he does he's really good at I'm you know I take yeah. out to Michael I have to you know I can't not I'm not going to slate the man as a fighter because he's got a big heart and he throws a lot of punches um but similar to Scott Harrison Scott Harrison what he did was well brilliant do you know what I mean but he wasn't he's technically yeah. limited this is technically they're very limited and. Um, I think they was expecting us to go in and just walk forward. That's what we normally do. You know, we're a front foot fighter, but we plan that a bit differently and we thought the game plan worked well. But yeah, maybe next time it'll be a bit different if there is a next time. But I'm looking at now, we're, we're going down that common walk through and then there's like, you know, your good fighters, your balotters and yeah, I, I well, feel like... Doors for you, isn't this Commonwealth title fight? Do you know much about your opponent? No, mate, you know what? I, I've, I, I only know that <clears throat> he's been in... I know he's been in with some really good kids... I know that he's. Um, I know that he's tough, and I know that he's game. And I'm expecting a really hard ten rounds from him. Personally, myself, I've not watched him, um, but I've left it to my team like normal. And you know, they've they've done enough um, study on him. Oh, Do you ever watch any of Pawns League? Right? You no, a... mate. No, you know what? The only the, the only the only one that I did was Gomez, and the only time I watched him was because I actually watched the Brian Phillips fighting versus Gomez, and I watched him then. Um, so that's the only that's the only opponent I've watched, and that's just because I was watching the show. So 
Yeah, but I've never actually gone on YouTube and started doing research, mate. So I'd, I'd just leave it to uh, Andy and Matty and let them um, let them do their bit. And then we work on stuff in the gym. Well, what they're watching, analyse, they can drum into you and train the can and subconsciously you're just going to do what's going to work. Definitely. Because but I, the, I, I, the, the, your tactics that you pulled off super, mate. You really did. So what, once, obviously you expect you want to win this title. You know, you expect, in, within yourself, you're going to expect yourself to win this title because you've got a champion mindset, mate. That's the way it should be. So what if, if you go over the line and get that win, what's your next step? Who are you looking at going forward? You know, I'm not. I'm not looking too far forward. Obviously, at this very minute, all my eyes are on Rizak Najib next Friday. I understand that. Yeah. I what know. The, bigger, I what know. You like the bigger picture behind the fight. Tough if fight, you... but then, I, you know, then after that, I'm thinking. Um, I know Reese Reese Bellotti and Liam Dillon are fighting for the British and the Commonwealth title, so. I feel I feel like I'm I should be in line for that next. You know, maybe um, defend this, maybe win this title and defend it next year when they're boxing, and then hopefully I can go for the winner. I don't see um, I don't see why not, and I feel like they're absolute cracking fights. I know they're the tough, they're, they're really good kids, but I feel like I'm at that level. So um, the You've only way you can prove it is by getting in with them. You've got to back yourself against everybody. Doesn't matter who it is or well, their reputation. The end there in that ring, mate, it's just you two against each other. Doesn't it? The reputation doesn't come with them. It's you against them on the night, mate. You know what? <clears throat> looking, I'm looking, looking at the super featherweight division. And I really feel there's only like there's only your Joe Cordini, your Zelfa Barrett, um, your, your Kikachi, and maybe your Archie Sharp. I feel like them four are maybe looking. They're like European onwards level. But I feel anyone else. I feel there's fifty fifty fights between us all, and I feel like the next couple of years could there could be some absolute crackers. So I'm um, yeah. I, I, I just can't wait, man. I'm really I'm looking forward to it. After obviously after I do the business next Friday. But do you know what? I completely agree with you there. I think them four are about the European level are pushing on to the world of war. That's what they're trying to do. And the rest is me. I'd give you a chance against anyone, don't be honest with you? Because the way you handled Gomez Jr. and the situation that night, you proved a lot of it on me. And you proved me, and not them proved me wrong because I, I, I don't only watched you once, like on YouTube in the past, a little clips that I'd seen. But that's the first fight I watched you live, mate. And you, you proved you belonged at that level mentally yeah. and with the skill set as well. You boxed brilliant, mate. And the mindset, the going to that, when obviously you're the unbeaten prospect in that fight, going to that fight. It's a big risk to take against someone like that. Do you know what I mean? Because you know the judges are against you. So I'd pack you against anyone. Anyway, the rest of them, uh, I'll give you a chance against them all. I I really appreciate that, mate. You know, you know what the issue was for us. Um, <clears throat> you can't buy experience in it. One that I jumped to level it was that we literally had five Midlands title fights lined up. We had five five different five different occasions where we was meant to box for the Midlands title because that's that's a title I um, you know I really wanted that area title. I wanted my Midlands title, but every every fighter just kept pulling out on us, and so it was for no fault of our own. You've got five no contests on your record, and is that the five Midlands title fights? I had to, I had to, um, I, we just couldn't get fights, mate. We tried our best with everyone. We tried offering, you know, we tried offering everyone. We even, Carl even offered a lot, you know, more money than you'd get for bigger titles, and we just couldn't get an opponent. So we had to, I sort of had to skip this level and go, right, we've got to just go for the English title. And obviously, when the, um, <clears throat> when the, the, the shot come up, yeah, we just had to take it with both hands and, and obviously that what what happened happened, but then I've got straight back in there. I've picked up another win, and we, we just carry on. It's not my mindset hasn't changed a bit. And a lot of people said, "Oh, you know, don't let it dampen you." Of course, it didn't. This is in boxing. You, you don't get two eyes on your wins, and you don't get two lows on your losses because at the end of the day, no. it don't last forever. Well, Joe, it mean, just by speaking to you, I tell it's, it's made you more. It's made you brought another level as a fight that fight. You can tell you've grew from it, and that's the that's the best way. If you get beat, if you don't learn from it, you're gonna like it's gonna happen again and again. You've learned, of course. like realistically, you never got beat, but you did, and you've learned from it massively. You've grew from the experience, mate. You can tell by talking to you. So, like, because you bounced back with a, was it a fifth round knockout? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, I boxed. You know what? I boxed a really tough kid. He hasn't been stopped by many super featherweights. The, I think the the only super featherweight that stopped him was um, actually one of one of the lads that I've boxed as an amateur, uh, Josh Holmes. And I think Josh Holmes uh, finished the fight with about twenty seconds to go. I think the stoppage was a bit like, yeah, yeah he's, you know. So when I looked at that, I thought, oh, you know, this Russian's tough. So I'm glad I'm coming back to, not obviously not um, an, a prospect, but. Yeah, I fought a real tough fight. And my coach said to me, Matty, he says, um, he went, oh, you'll level up this fight, mate. You'll see what I mean, you know, when you get in the ring and stuff. And it just had a different feel to it, mate, when I got back in the ring. Um, 
And I just felt, I just felt like, yeah, you know, if, if this is this is it now. Everything's come together. What with what we did before and that all this Gomez thing that happened before. And yeah, I feel like this is my prime years now, mate. And I feel like the best thing is yet to come. Well, you're 27 year old, aren't you? You're definitely you're in, your, you're in your prime, mate. This is your time to like start taking these fights and making a name for yourself because you've started making a name for yourself, mate. By the Gomez fight, to be honest, with you now a lot of people are taking notes of you and they'll watch yeah. this for Commonwealth title fight. If you win this and look impressive than this, mate, your reputation's going to grow even more. It's about publicity and it, it's definitely. put you on that platform. Definitely. And I feel like like it's such a close division. I mean, other than like other than them top three, and then, then Archie Sharp, who you know is a bit inactive, but he's probably because of who he's beat and how many fights he's had, he's probably yeah, he's loved him, he? plus, you know, he's um he's a good fighter. So other than them four, mate, I, I fancy me, you know, I fancy me chances against anyone. And you're in boxing, you have to back yourself, and a lot of it's all in your head. It really is. <laughs> 90% of it's in your head, mate. 90% of boxing is in your head. I'm telling you now. If you're as good as you are mentally. They're overachieved, like, like overachieved, like be the one so much. I mean, look at like um, Jason Wilborn's a prime example. You know, he, he technically he wasn't he wasn't great, but he just worked that hard and put his son in a position, winning everything, and then getting that um, world title shot. Back himself that much as well, didn't he? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's a self belief. If you believe in yourself enough, for 100, percent and have no doubt in your training and with your ability. You forget about their style, forget about their tactics. You where all you're doing in that ring is concentrating what you're gonna do. Do you know what I mean? Then it's borderline it's, it's like it's arrogant, but it's like your confidence is that high because how much you believe in yourself and the people around you that you, you and it makes a difference in the way you fight, mate. Yeah, it makes a massive difference. Mate, I agree, and we've seen it in the past and we'll, we'll see it again in the future. Um, yeah, well, obviously, this year you're gonna win this title, mate. Right? Next year you want to mix it with some of the rest in the division, get two or three of them out the way. And then that's when you step up to like, so like Archie Sharp and the, the rest of them, do you know what I mean? Because that's Definitely. the way you want to go forward. Yours oh, the, whoever's the best in the division, that, that's who you want to tag and long term. Yeah. Um, oh, it's right, mate. So I mean, how, it's so how did you meet Carl Graves? How did, how did that come about? So, <clears throat> my, uh, my coach, um, he was a professional fighter. He won, the, um, area, he won the area title and then won one of their Masters titles. He used to spar, he used to spar Carl. Um, years ago, he used to spy Carl. Um, he said he got a load of you know, he got some really good rounds in with, with Greavesy. Like, said there was good eight round wars in the gym, and then he put me through to Carl and just said, Look, you you know, I trust Carl. There's not many, there's not many managers out there you're going to trust, mate. And I trust Carl, so obviously, I trust Matty. So we put our trust into Carl, and you know what, mate, I, I can't. Is, is everything I've asked the Carl he's done for me the Midlands title we tried we tried our absolute best it got me the shot on the uh, Sky Sports he's got me another title fight everything I've asked of him mate he's done so I think he's one of the best in the business Cal. mate as he is I can't he's follow he's one of the best in the business he's down there mate he's genuine he's real and he looks after his fights he has your best interest right? and that, that Carl and he's, he's a good man he really is help. so like, what, what Carl's plans, uh, fought on the McCormick's only fight did, what did he think on the night he thought I won, yeah. He said he, he went. I've watched it back with um, he said I watched it back with um, on the uh, the day after and he watched it again muted. Uh, and he said, Yeah, I think the same, mate. I thought you won by one or two rounds. Um, but two rounds of I literally just spoke to I literally not long just spoke to Carl early this morning. And he said, Right, he went, we win this title, mate. And then, then we um, <clears throat> we get the right fights for you next year. We 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 go, you know, we take fights at the right time when the timing's right. He said, So. It's going to be a massive year for us, mate. So we've got to come. We've got to come through next Friday in 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 good fashion, and then twenty twenty four is going to be the biggest year, just like this one was. Uh, it's going to be the biggest year in my boxing life, one hundred percent. I'm all agree. I believe you have a. I believe you will have a massive year next year, mate. As you do, and I can't see why. There's no reason why you can't win the British titles beyond you and push on. Do you know what I mean? Once you get it, once you win a title, it takes you to another level itself, doesn't it? Once you, you have a title, I've shown you definitely. There's I mean, you know what? When I first turned over, mate, f uh, five or six years ago, um, I was I had a 50-50 amateur record. I was beating some good kids. I was losing to some other kids, you know, especially towards the end. I shouldn't have even been in there. I was my mindset wasn't right at all, but I was just taking the fights and the one no mugs, you know, there was really good kids. You, when you've had that many fights, you're you only box <coughs> good yeah, kids. Pass, walk, pass, uh, isn't it? And then I was gonna walk away from boxing, but I had a year out. And then I went back in the gym and Andy and Matty was on about putting me on the road. But they got me a few fights at home and they said, you know, oh, he's progressed. I can't believe how well he's progressing, you know. And things just started clicking, mate. After all them years, things clicked in the gym. And 
like when I first turned over, I only wanted to win a Midlands title. Um, but yeah, I mean, my me, uh, mindset's changed now, and I've, I've sparred some top quality lads, you know, like Josh Warrant and Maxi Hughes. I've, I've done loads of rounds with them, your Reese Moulds and people like this, you, you know, your Leon Woodstocks. And I've heard great feedback from their coaches after plenty of rounds sparring. And yeah, I really believe now, mate, that we can go on and win big titles. So, obviously, what you said there, I'll touch on it. When you first turned over to 2017, what were you coaches and yourself just wanted to have a few away fights? And if you could get an area title, that's not like No, so they discussed it between them. For me, I didn't really know. I didn't I didn't get how this professional game really works. I, I, I only go on. I'm a massive boxing fan, a huge boxing fan, but you don't understand the politics deal until you actually yeah. enter it. And then you turns professional, mate. Everybody who turns professional turns green. They need a good team around them to look after them. Otherwise, yeah, you get it a lot. You really do, but obviously we got a um, we got a couple of win wins in that, and then I stopped a couple, and yeah, we, we just we we had so many we had like five fights in our first year, and then the same again <clears throat> before COVID. It you know we, we are quite active, um, and then we just met, they they made the decision like said no yeah we well, definitely ain't gonna go on the road. He's gonna be a contender, and Cal said yeah he's um, he's got something about him so. I just, you know, I had the, when I first, when there was first talking and mentioning titles and that, mate, to be honest, it was going like in one ear and out the other. I was sort yeah. of laughing, going, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? These are mad, these. But now, these are mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that, you know, they're on about winning these big titles and getting these big homecomings. And I was like, you know, yeah, yeah, right. You know, I didn't really have that self belief. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it is, isn't it? Low self esteem and self belief. It is, mate. It, it, and it just changes you completely because now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing, there's some, I'm sparring some good kids and the, you know, it's, we're getting some good rounds and experience and they're not, you know, they're really close spars and you're coming out thinking, wow, you know what, on paper, these are level above, but really, you know, there isn't that much you're between. that level, mate, if you can compete with them in sparring, because not, not many professionals take sparring like they do, I mean, they spar properly. So if you oh, can compete with them in sparring, keep them close, you know you're at that level. You've got to believe in yourself from them spars against the likes. Of, what were the likes of Andrew Joshua and Maxi Hughes? Because you've got to believe in yourself fighting sparring likes of them doing well, mate. You've got to. Do you know what I mean? You've got to know you belong at that level. I've, my actual, it's funny, actually, because the very first pro spar I had was Maxi. Um, the very first pro spar. He's as well, he? When he was... Um, when he was... A super featherweight. So we got taken down to spar him, and obviously, you know, this South poor at um, Jimmy Arrington's Jimmy was at. Um, and it's funny because I've sparred Maxi over the years, and it's man, you know, how much he's improved. And then I look and think, wow, you know what I mean? I've improved just as much. So, and it's, it's just when you put your centre around them people, mate, it's like, um, it's brilliant. And I've come on so much from sparring them. I really have, you know, um, they've, they've kind of brought they, they, they take you to the next levels, and these spars are harder than the fights. So, when you're doing, you know, mate, I've Lost done it. like I've done 10 rounders and I've done like five with Josh and then five with Maxi, and you don't get you don't it don't get harder than that. <laughs> You've got to be at that level, mate, to be able to do that well far with each of them, do you know what I yeah. mean? Back to back, and like you, like you said, Iron Sharpens Iron, do you know what I mean? Being around like of Josh Warrington and Maxi, you're champions, world champions. If you're around them type of people, make success, build success, and you rub off me and stuff like that, the way they carry themselves, and that's why you, you're getting the self belief within yourself, and it's taking you to another level. Mate, this is just it. I mean, if you hang around with like, if you hang around with five losers, then you, you're gonna be the sixth, aren't you? If exactly. you hang around with people that are winners, mate, you're gonna be the sixth. That's just how it is. So we keep our circle small, and we're all. You know, we all work hard. We all set our goals. Up, we all set good goals, and we just we, we want to win, mate. That's it. And when you've got five winners around you, then you're gonna be the sixth. Exactly. You got to have that span. Like, did you see that? I put a post on the other day about Ben uh, Whitaker's span partners for the Oscar Day Holly Fight. Yeah. See the span. That, that's the level you need to like, compete. Be around oh, constantly because it keeps you at that level. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Who's your hardest fight? Would you say that you've had like to leave in the pros? Obviously, other than the Gomez fight. Yeah, I'm about, yeah, Michael definitely. But um, other than that, the hardest fight I've had was probably you know what I fought a Nicaraguan mate called um, his name was Brian Bray Brian something. And I tell you, mate, he was tough. And you know when you you know when you, you you're landing shots on him and you think you know is it you know and then just it's like they're not taking effect. Even when we got out, the amount of shots I landed on him, it was like he didn't even have a mark on him. <laughs> tough, tough. As Did, as were you questioning yourself during that fight because of it? Yeah, he's, he, he, that has to bring you on. It, it takes a lot out of you when you when you land some of your best shots on someone and they just sort of walk through them. You're like, you know, he's a... Uh, it affects your mindset, because obviously fighters aren't used to that. 
100 percent anyone else i've landed on in the past clean you know you're taking an effect on them because of the way they deteriorate but he sort of like got stronger as it went on i thought fucking hell yeah it's think what it does though, it gets you, it gets you mentally ready for title level that because obviously when you have title level not everyone's going to just fall they'll just be in there for the full yeah. 12 rounds or 10 rounds oh 100 percent. there's a reason that there's a reason in there that, that they're going for titles because it's um you're it's 50 50 fights you don't get a, you don't really get a title fight that's one-sided and this, you know, the same with this lad that I'm fighting next. I know he's going to be tough. He's been in there with top operators. He's not, um, he ain't no mug. So I'm expecting the, the, you know, the best version of him, because I, th- I feel well, like he's not, the, he's not going to just fall over, is he? No, this is his last chance. I, I feel like this is his last chance now. And you know, the, the, where does you know where where would where would the loser go from this? I, I don't know. So. That that's that's definitely not in my mind. Cause I've in my mind, I've I've trained too hard. I've worked too hard. I'm I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna beat this kid. So and I'm sure his mindset's the exact same. Cause if it, if his mindset won't, then I don't think he'd be um, coming next Friday night. Exactly, mate. It's about who's got the biggest, most strongest mentality, the biggest dog inside him in fights like that. Oh, that's what you've got to expect anyway. Um, definitely, especially you- talent. I think I've always said it. You know, talent only. It matters for maybe five rounds because after five rounds you're tired. I don't care who you are, you're tight. After five yeah. rounds in a good competitive fight, you're tired, and then it starts bringing out what you've got up top and what you've got. Um, in your heart, yeah, in your heart. It's about keeping composed the- it when you're tired, being able to keep oh, you doing sweet. your mindset, what you can do when you're first. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, hard work beats talent, doesn't it? When talent refuses to work, of course, when, when talent ain't working hard enough, hard work wins every time. And it's the same, that's the same in every sport. You see it a lot. You know, hard workers, hard workers always come out on top. So what's your training campaign going like for it? Have you, has it been one of your best ones or? Yeah, you know what, mate? Because we've had the time and um, <clears throat> every fight. Well, not, is, I've, every seen, fight. I've been watching your training clips to be honest with you, and you've obviously you've been doing you're smashing the 800 metres, haven't you? I've been looking at your mate. times and that. That mate, that's that is hard, mate. Honestly, that that is hard. We, what we aim for is, um, so we, we build it up, <clears throat> we build it up gradually over the weeks, um, and we do the first ones are like minute rests, and then we'll do like six, and then we'll do like eight, and then we'll do like four eight hundreds, four four hundreds, four twos, and four ones. And, but then what it's building up to is your ten, your, your ten eight hundred meters with forty five second rest, and nice. it's in. Hitting that two, you know, hitting that under two fifty every time. It, it is hard, mate, mentally when you've done, when you've well, done four. You're like fucking hell, there's six more to well, do. Well, but a lot of people don't realise about you as well, mate. It's why you should get more credit as well. You work full time, don't you? I work full time. Yeah, yeah. I work. I work full time, mate. I mean, the uh, scaffolding trait, and it, it's not. It's physically hard, you know. Uh, passing gear to scaffolders all day is not easy. It's uh, it helps for training, like doesn't it? it helps with your strength for training and that. But you, you, obviously, you don't have the luxury, to, like, so, like for instance, Gomez Junior has that be his full arm job boxing, is it? He won't work. I can't even work, does he? I'm not. I, you know, I don't listen. I don't know nothing about him. I mean, I know, I don't know what he does outside the gym. I know he's a family. I know he's. I think he's a family man. I think he's got um, a little and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if he works or anything like that. I'm not too sure. And, and yeah. the fighters you are going to be in with next year, especially if you win this title, mate, and try and get a British title shot, boxing's going to be their full arm job, isn't it? Where it's not your full arm job, you're not in that position yet. But it's a no, lot harder for you, and people don't understand that. No, it's you know I've got to be. I'm up. I'm up every morning. Every morning for the last. Um, I've been in. We call it training. You know, I train all the time. I'm not. I won't really say. All I'd say is diet camp. All I do is cut the weight. We we get the weight down for a good eight weeks under Jack Coke nutritionist <clears throat> um, for eight weeks. That's all. We, that, that's what it's classed as, and we up the training a bit. But we're always tra- we, we we train all year round. Um, but yeah, it's been the camp is mate. It's been fantastic. It really has. I've had really good rounds sparring with um with good with good people. I've been in with Jack Bates and Leon Woodstock. Um, the young Harvey Eldo who's coming through, you know, these these young lads that are, are hungry, uh, it's fantastic the sparring. Oh, they're gonna, you know, they want to they want to prove a point, and he, he comes and gives good rounds. The sharp, um, after on the my last spar, I did 10, I did uh, six Willie on Woodstock, and then young Harvey jumped in and gave us the last four, and he was fresh, so it's good, mate. I've had, you know, I've had, a, I've had a fantastic camp, I really have, so oh, there's no. Sorry. Friday. Your days must be long, I believe. Have you started that you thought I'm working? Or have you got a camp as well? Your days must be long. Oh, mate, 
this is it. You know, I wait from <clears throat> so I get up every every morning. I'm up for five five fifteen every morning. I get up. I mean, you know, I uh, get that kettle on, mate. Get me key training gear on. I have my black coffee and I go to the gym. Um, and that's it. You know, every morning I go straight from the gym. I get showered and I go to wait for seven. It's about seven fifteen. I start at seven thirty. Your, your day is seven thirty till four thirty, and then from there. I'll go home, get me snack, and then I'm straight to the gym again. So, you know, it's, you're, you're out of the house from fucking quarter past five in the, in the morning. So what time are you watching getting home at night? About nine o'clock and ten o'clock at night every yeah, night? About, yeah, about, about eight o'clock, at, uh, eight o'clock, half eight at night, yeah. And, you long, know, got, long days then for five o'clock in the morning, mate. Oh, mate, definitely, definitely. But I think, you know what? It brings you on mentally because when when it when it gets hard in that ring, I know I've cut no corners and I know you've, that you've got the mentality. You definitely. I mean, when you can work that hard, if you don't really put success, trust me, you're you're gonna do. It. I, I believe you'll get the British title, mate. It's so interesting. No, it as well. But more importantly, it's about the mindset. You've got the mindset. You. This is you've it. Got the mindset for it. Mate, you're right. You're definitely right. I mean, if if you if you spoke to me five years ago, mate, I'd have just I'd have said the same. I'd have gone, oh yeah, I'd be happy with a Midlands title, and if anything else, it'd be a bonus. But now it's now it's I want why you know with these why can't I do it? I'm why I'm no different to these um, hardworking fighters like your Josh Warrington's and your Maxes. Then exactly, you know? mate. Look what Josh Warrington's done with his hard work. He's small. He was boxing on small old shows when I was pro. Unbelievable. Um, you know what he's won and how he's done everything, mate. And he's always been written off. He really has, <clears throat> and it even shows. Look at the last fight. I mean, other than that, other than that one combination, which is boxing for you, the, it was smashing the fight. You know, he's he's fantastic, mate, and he's good to, to look up going to. Him, in, going into that fight, right? I picked um, the would the knockout between round seven and ten, but I, I did not expect Josh to box like that. I didn't give I didn't give Lee Wood a round in that fight going it, until the knockout. I, I mate, thought he was getting dominated, mate. He was so flat, mate, and I don't know. I don't know if it was the weight or whatever, but Josh was fantastic. He really was. I, d I didn't feel he it. He deserves a rematch for me at the weight above. He deserves yeah. a rematch, mate, at the weight above. Oh, you know I mean, definitely. He's last, you know, last run out for it. I whether obviously, if if whoever wins out the both of them, maybe he'll have one more. But I feel like get that fight on in a load of money. They've, they've both got a load of money anyway. But, the, you the know, the legs he's a secure. Way. Both of the yeah. legacies are skewed. At this, at this stage in their career, mate, they're not going to find a, a bigger fight to sell out no. the stadium in Nottingham. Not, do you know what I mean? Lee Wood will struggle for him to find a different opponent that's going to sell out there. Where if he has a rematch with Josh Warrington, mate, it'll sell out in seconds. It's the full country will want to watch it. Lee, you know, Lee's looking at the it's, it's a massive payday. They both earned it and deserved it. But like you touched on there, why can't you be the next one of them? Do you know what I mean? If you wear hard, if you wear hard enough, mate, and believe in yourself enough, you've got the mentality, mentality sorry, so it's about the mindset. If you can keep the mindset as hungry as like a lion, you, why can't you be the next one of them? Mate, 100 percent And this is what I'm looking at and what the team's looking at. We're we're sitting and going, you know, if they can do it, they're not they're not, you know, it's not it's not specially it don't it's not it's not rocket science, it's just working hard, it's getting up in the morning, it's doing you putting your hard work, work and you're doing your album. And I'm you've doing got, that. You've now. got a good team you, yeah. You've got a brilliant manager in Carl Green, she's one of the best in the game. He, and he can get you he got me on the um, the Terence Crawford card in Glasgow. Do you know what I mean? So he, oh, if he can get me, it was a, Ricky Burns. When he, Ricky, Ricky Burns. But if he can get, he can get me with someone like a real, massive losing record on a card like that, he can do stuff with someone like you. No doubt mate, about it. You're with the right person. Mate, you know what? I uh, I remember watching that fight. Um, and they, they actually ripped Ricky, they actually ripped Terence Crawford off. They were saying, oh, is, you know, is that, do, is that the right fight for us or do we take a bit, someone a bit harder? But what they didn't know is probably the fucking best ever in boxing, isn't he? You know, I didn't give Ricky Baird around that night myself. I don't think he went nope. around personally. It's the same when he fought uh, in Dongo. Um, and I like me. I, I love Ricky Baines was absolute quality. You know, he's never been stuck. He's one tough man. He's never been stuck. He's a legend of this world. Oh, he is, mate. He really is. He's a boxing hero. Still lives the life now. You look at him and he's in fantastic shape. Um, really does live the life. Well, to me, mate, he's an all-time great, isn't he? He's oh, already done in the era. Do you know what I mean? I believe, I believe he'll stop Charlo. He'll do a number on Charlo. And do you yeah. know what? I wouldn't... I might sound daft saying this way, but I wouldn't really even rule him out against Canelo. He's got the ability to box Canelo as well for 12 rounds. I said this, mate, and he's he's just got that dog in him, and he won't he won't turn up like I feel like, like a lot of people, and there's no disrespect to him. I feel like a lot of them turn up and they see it as a win if they just go the twelve rounds with Canelo. No, they do. Charlo did. 
I feel like, yeah, just getting through the fight is like, oh, like a win. I feel like, you know, um, but I, 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 Crawford will turn up and give it his best. I, I, I think Crawford, he will. Crawford will either get knocked out in that fight, mate, or win. he'll come to win, do you know what I mean? Yeah, right, yeah, it's not going any other way. Lie, don't know, he, won this he won't be a number on the record where say, oh, yeah. I went to distance with Canelo. That's not him. When he was a kid, um, I don't know if you've seen an interview of him. When he was a kid, he didn't interview right not long ago, saying that his mum used to pay like lads three or four years above him to try and beat him up in the gun, or like every day. So that, do you know what I mean? The man's got the dog in him. And she said, he said apparently he won the money every time of his mum because he never got, he wasn't losing these three fights. Oh, so mate, that's the type of guy in there, mate. You can see, I mean, Kel, Bro Kel Brooks, who's been in with a lot of people, Kel Brooks said it was like fighting four different people. He said that he comes out different each round and it's like, fucking hell, you, you can't. He said, I'm good at sussing people out, but with him, you, you, you can't because if you suss one way out, he'll come out he's the next the, round different. I'd say he's one of the possibly two or three fighters on the planet active right now who can switch in a fight instantly and make you it You know effective. what, 100%. I mean, you've got... You've got You've got Inouye. Inouye's fantastic. You've got yeah. you've Canelo, who's obviously fantastic. Um, you Crawford's, and then you know you've you've got you've got that cruiserweight. I forgot his name. That um, Otto Otto Payer. Yeah, Otto 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 he's class, and he? he, he's he's unbelievable. And then you've got like Bivol. There, there aren't there aren't many of these elite level fighters, mate. They're unbelievable. No, he isn't. He isn't. I'd say Fury Uzek are elite as well. There on that level. Um, yeah. Lomachenko. Is it Lama, you know what? I think a lot of fighters in Britain and coaches are sleeping on L Lomachenko's training methods because they're massively effective. Like he does things in the gym that not many people have seen or do before, and it's just it's where he's said that is a genius for me. Yeah, and not like Lomachenko, he changed the spot the way people should train now because he, he even after like for instance where you do these long days. Obviously, Lomachenko doesn't need to do that, mate. He turned pro with like 500 fights and he's written off 300 fights. Yeah, lost like two. Yeah, so he didn't need, he didn't need to have work, but he had a big uh, back and behind him anyway. But after these long training sessions, like, he'll go like play chess for two hours or something. I didn't know, so them just keeping the mind active. Like, it's mental, man. Sharp. It is it's mental. mental stuff he does. It's, it's, like, he probably lo looked into what I think. Some of the seeing his three minute rounds on the water. <laughs> mate, it's that's what I mean. Like, he's he's took he's an all time great. I don't care what anyone says, Lomachenko. Like without a shadow of a doubt, he obviously coming to boxing a bit late, but the the guy's a legend. Like you can't. Who was your heroes? Who like Levi? But uh, coming up in boxing when you first as a kid, who did you look up to? Who? In in my era, mate, it was Ricky Hatton. Um, that that was my era. That you, when I was growing up, mate, watching Ricky. Um, Britain's absolutely. most loved fighter ever, isn't he? It was, you know, I mean, for Britain, it, other than like Warrington's probably. Warrington's probably got as, if not maybe not better, but his following's just as big. You know the way the way that Manx followed Ricky Atten, mate, was um, unbelievable, wasn't it? I mean the atmosphere. Oh, Leeds, oh, Leeds followed just Warrington, don't he? Yeah, he is in Leeds. He's, he's an he's an absolute legend, mate, and he's in the sport. Josh is. Uh, what do you like, What you like, Spar? Leave right. What do you like? Is he comp very competitive as well? Yeah, it's good. It's good. You know what, mate? It's good. We've had some really good spars. It's like uh, just the way he fights. He's, We've had some good toe to toes, me and Josh, um, and I've learned. I've just learned so much from him, mate, over the years and his experience. Like you can't buy experience; you really can't. And what I've learned, what I've picked up from him, and Maxi, Maxi, Maxi is like one of the hardest people to land a glove on, mate. He's technically yeah. so so good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he's you got like three different styles, and you've got like Reese Mould in the gym. You got three different styles there. That, uh, and you, you know you ain't going for easy rounds. You know on that Saturday morning you're going to go in there, and it's a, it's a tough morning, but it's fun, isn't it? You know it's that's what if we're there to do. Well against them, why? Like if you are doing well against them, it's fine, mate. Why can't you be the next Josh Warren? Truthfully, because like, obviously you've come a long way, mate. You come from Grimsby. You only had fifty five fights, fifty four fights in the amateurs, and now you're selling out places in Grimsby, aren't you? Under Carl, you don't like you, you're getting a lot of fans behind you at the minute. I've I've done a uh, four hundred and fifty tickets for this at home, and uh, it was I like, was laughing last night. Carl said, "Ah, oh, you fucking beat me, mate. I only did, the most I did was three fifty. <laughs> four fifty is a lot of good following, mate. I tell you now, because if you get this title, it'll grow even more. And if you go for a British title, we'll get that. It'll grow even it's more. It's growing and it's... growing, mate. It really is. Um, Blunder Park. Why, like, he's, like Josh Boynton come out of nowhere, no one wanted him to be to win world champion. None of these promoters because they, they all thought he's going to be a small all show. No, he's, no, no he's one, selling no. out stadiums. 
selling them out, mate. Yeah, he's, you know what, mate? It's one of the. Do you know what he's means actually, like I mean, He's actually been put as uh, the, his walkout against um, his walkout against Lara, the, the second one. He's been put up there with one of the greatest walkouts ever in British boxing, and I was and I was there ringside, and it was oh, mate, it was fantastic. You look around and you're like, wow, you know what I mean? It's unbelievable yeah. there. You know what I mean? When you're there, then I'm sure it's like that, mate. That's when you want to look around and say, this, this is what you're aiming for. Do you yeah, that's why you're in the game. I want some of this. And, that's what and you I, want, mate. And, and it's at a lower level. You, but, you've yeah. got the mentality to be able to deal with it as well. Where a lot of fighters, when they get there, they'll believe too much in their own hype or they'll just fall to rails. I think you've got the mentality to deal with that if you got to that level, mate. So if you work hard, you're under the right team. Why can't you? Well, yeah. Obviously, you, and you, when you first turn pro, you, everyone does make you the box a few German. What was like? Did any of them stand out to you after where you thought, Do you know what? I learned something from that fight there. Me, I think every fight I took something away from them. A lot of these journeymen are different. You get your ones that come and they just took up and they take a lot of shots on the gloves. Um, but then you get your awkward movers. And when you get them awkward movers, you're like, Right, yeah, you can't just go in and blow them out because. You know, you, you, the the tough men. They're not. They get. They're doing this week in, week out, and that's what people don't see. And they see the record and go, "Fucking you know, you're fighting someone with hundred losses." Yeah, it's hundred losses. It's not hundred losses. That's that's hundred grand that in his back pocket. That's what that yeah. is. He's, he's not. He's it's not it. losing. He's winning. You know the daft little fiddles that'll get through rounds on like spit the gun shield out when you need to hold when you need to. Yeah, or really, really, like I used to get told stuff like punch a side at a nerve on the fighter. Do you know what I mean? So they can't run as much. Your rabbit punches and uh, you know there's, there's all sorts of little tricks me with these top chairmen that I think a lot of fighters learn more against them than they do when they win the boxing over prospects because prospects a lot of them don't test themselves but generally don't no. know when they're going there someone who's hitting them back who's not there to lie down the fall and that's why this is I think a lot of fighters boxing boxing. it's a massive problem here because they're not getting tested enough growing through the no. ranks you know what I mean as they come up they, 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 they might like record. There might be a massive ticket sales to bypass British level because they're selling that many tickets and they go straight to like well because of that popular. And once they get there, mate, they get found out big damn it. It basically kills their soul. And that's why they normally to defeat, uh, retire after one or two defeats. They can't handle it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Being able to handle defeats, massive in boxing. Did, did, they, how, did you, how did you feel when you first like with the race bombers as and what did it did it hit your heart? Um you met, I, I was when it when it said split and they, and they announced them scorecards. I thought, oh, I've definitely I've got that then, yeah, because you know how wide it was. I thought, well, I've won that definitely because I thought the first four rounds, the first four rounds and the last round was dead, you know, clear winning rounds. So I thought, oh, well, there's five in. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's, there's definite five in the bag without the close rounds. I thought, nice one. Yeah. Um. So it won't. It didn't run through me at all. You know, that could I could I have lost when them scorecards come out? But yeah, I thought. Well, I went back to the changing rooms, mate, as you do, and I was absolutely devastated. Um, the day after, I was again. I, you know, I was absolutely devastated. But then um, the day after that, I said, you know what? Fuck this! Like this is boxing. You don't. You, you win some, you lose some. I lost as an amateur. I've lost in life, and I'll fucking get back, and I'm gonna win. And it means nothing. Um, losing the fight it means nothing. It's how you come back from it. That fire just burnt, mate. And I thought, yeah, like, you know, I, I said to Matt, I said to Carl, I said, come on, get me another fight. I'm, I'm, I want to go again. I'm not, um, I ain't saying, um, I'm fucking thinking about this. Like, you know, what's a, what, what's a loss? It's not, it's nothing. It's, um, just a bit, it's just a record at the end of the day. And I want another, you know, I want to get back in there with 50 50 fights. And that's, sure, that's what I think. on the Midlands fight. I wanted a 50 50 10 rounder, but we just, you know, we just, we just couldn't get it through no fault of my own. Because you're, um, you're, you're a massive high risk fight now, mate. The people have seen you. And seeing what you can do at that level, you know, you're an Irish fight now, so you are going to struggle to get matched up with your style. You, if you're not, if you have a, you're going to look bad against you, if you, if you're Jane, unless you beat your up or not, you're going to look, it's a, you're not a person to look good against because you're, you're boxing pretty brilliant, your movement is it's brilliant, mate. You, you prove that against Gomez, so you're an Irish, you're a very Irish fight, in my opinion. You're going to have to force out these fights, and that's why winning this title is coming. Uh, is it the third of November you're fighting? That position to um, it's like a mandatory position. Then after this, to go right, well, uh, you've got to. They have to give me the fight. Yeah. So we've got to fight. Once, once you're in that position, yeah. mate, then then the balls in your court. I mean, you, once you're in that position and won that title, then the, it, it, the balls in your court. The, the tags on your back. Then and you get the fight you want. I might have a I, put, I might have a record. To be fair, I mean, touch you know, touch wood. I had fifty four amateur fights and I never took one standing eight. Not in. I never That's never took. Never touched the floor. Never had a standing eight. I, you know, luckily as a pro, I hadn't, I hadn't done that. I've never touched the canvas. Um, 
you know, it's probably through sparring all of your lads. I've always been the lightest one in the gym and sparring some real good amateur kids that we had in the gym. And um, and through the years, I think it's just toughened me up. And yeah, it's, I think that was the that's going to get us on the road. Obviously, normally, normally when, 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 uh, the way your box comes, you know, the like, counter punching style, normally them type of fighters, they're not, they're like, they're not, they, you can get to them, can you? Do you know what I mean? But obviously, you're a lot tougher than that. With your mentality, man, I'm just tell by speaking as well. You took some decent shots of Gomez as well. You, obviously, you've got a chin. You know what, mate? There's, I couldn't, um, to, uh, no disrespect, you know, he, he's, he's got his hands raised, so there's nothing to thingy from his behalf, but he, he couldn't. He couldn't really punch, mate. To be honest, it he made up was for he, it. Was he and he has got he's got a good chin himself, and he made up for it in weight rate. But no, he couldn't he couldn't punch at all, mate. Who's the biggest not... punchy boxing Levi? Has anyone that you know? Yeah, the the biggest, you know, um, the biggest puncher I've been in with, mate. I'd probably say is um, Brad Dawes. He was only a super bantamweight, but yeah, he, he could he could fud, mate. Yeah, he, he could. Um, I boxed him twice. One, uh, both amateurs, like I beat him as a senior and he beat me in the junior ABAs, which I thought I won. But yeah, yeah. He, he was, um, and he is a lovely lad as well. He's, but yeah, he could fud. Reese Mould, he, Reese Mould can punch. He can, yeah, yeah Reese he, Mould can wallop as well. <laughs> yeah, he's known for being a bit of a puncher in the Reese Mould. He is. Wallop. And then Maxi, Maxi's got this strange, this strange power. It's like, it's, it's like fudding shots, mate. When they land on you, they're like stiff, the solid shots. Maxi can punch as well. Well, obviously, it's hard enough to earn your respect on you because he had Cam Walsh's junior, mate. He lost for numbers all night. Mate, there's no way. I don't... Pff, that baffle me. That, that it was shocking, me, isn't it? And, and, and Warrington's another one. He, he, he it's a lot harder than the record stakes. I think that's where a lot of people have um, a bit fingered by Josh because they look at his record and go, he can't punch. He, 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 he can punch enough to get, well, your, I think that's to what, get your attention. I think personally, mate, that's what got um, Selby, Frampton and Willie Wood. I think that's what they were shocked by, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a lot of deceiving the it's harder than yeah. it is. Tempo is unbelievable. I mean, you know, but you can tell when you can tell him fight like his back's massive for a featherweight. His back's huge. I mean, I think he might be the most drug tested fighter for some reason, but obviously he's a clean sportsman and it's because they, they, they didn't want him to get to this level, really. No, you know I mean he's, he's like faster. The, are, it's disgusting, really. You, you can Josh is a clean, you know what I mean? he's um he's clean, he's He's just a dedicated, hard-working lad. But that's going to all come your way soon, mate, when you get this title under your belt. Oh, we're target. expecting it. You know, I wouldn't... Um, th I think this is what dampens Canelo. And, you know, when they've been done for drugs, it's kind of yeah. like, can you really put you them... question everything then, don't you? Taking a drug, you know, you can't... Can you, if you, when they've been caught cheating, can you, can you put them as the best? I don't feel like you can. That's <laughs> why I discredit Morrison and Manny Pacquiao, don't you? There's not a chance he was clean. Not a chance in this air, do you know what I mean? There's no possible way that you can go from minimum, you know, minimum weight at seven stone to super to, well weight. To super well, but knocking people out spark cold. No, yeah. no, he was, can you remember the cut off? Like, he was lifting his arms off the cut off, saying, I mean, the ribs and that, like, cut off's a massive body puncher. He was bullying these big, strong, like, well weights and world class fighters, mate, and super well weights. Then all of a sudden, he uh, fly mill, who has some fair Olympic style drug testing, starts getting knocked clean out and beat by Jeff Horn and that. No, I think he's. I like. I don't rate his career the way everyone else does. To be honest with me, because of, because of the cheating. He's an unbelievable fighter. Don't get me. I mean, you don't see many people that you know the, the um, ferocious, the velocity that he his punches, and you don't see a lot of that. But yeah, I, yeah, we said that. Like me and Matty was saying the same. That yeah, there's definitely some. Um... I'll give him. I'll do I, I loved watching him fighting. Mate. I'll give him credit from like. Possibly featherweight below. I'll give him the credit for them weights and the way he was. That could have been him, but after that, he was definitely them lightweights, mate. And the lightweights, no doubt Keith Furman, it's like fucking hell. Keith Furman's like double your size. <laughs> if you go and look at pictures, mate, his head's doubled over the over the years. Yeah, yeah his head doesn't big, grow. I've never well, done he's, got big, he's got big meatball head on him shoulders now. He had a pig head. Well, yeah, he did. This, yeah, is he a, did. this is about you, mate. So, it's, you, 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 family man, Levi. Have you got kids and that? Yes, mate. I've got. A, I've only got the one little and like he's, he's enough at the minute. Um, yeah, I've got. I've got a fiance, mate. I've got a little and he's um, he's five on Christmas Day. <laughs> it's a perfect present for this title, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, mate. Know what I and all these boxing, we take all these times away. From, all these times away from you, mate. That you spend out the house from your family. Do you know what I mean? This is what it's for. I'd love to take this when you win this title, so you can look back and you've got. Oh, you've, you've you've you know I mean? to look someone to look up to. And you've been a good role model. That's what the life's about. 
the rest of your life. The thing is that it lives with you for the rest of your life, mate. Some of the money can't buy you. Just, what you do in boxing in your career is going to live with you forever. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. make oh, sure mate. when you retire, you know you're retired and you give it your organs to everyone you could. Yeah. That's the main thing, in my opinion. Like, oh, I, I wouldn't would... want to retire. I personally, if it was me, I wouldn't want to retire like 33 and all and I box nobody. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you, like, your career is false and the, your legacy is false for you because you look at that record you know, with the boxing, it's a shambles. You make your wins worth well. Like that Richie took against Thomas Jr. It was worth well. You oh, hundred. These are the these are the. This is what you're in it for. You know, I've never, I never, I'd never like say ask, ask Cal. I've never, I've never. It's not in me to say. Oh, I oh Cal, can you get me an easy fight? Or oh, I've never. I don't fuck that. You don't want that. You want you want to be known as. Oh, you know, he'll get in with anyone. I, I'll fight any anyone that yeah. Cal puts. Me, I've said yes. Yeah, if you, 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 if you, it's all about who's the best on the night, isn't it? It's all about who's the best on the night. If you prepare yourself of, properly, you can beat anyone on the night. Definitely, a lot of these names are hyped. The the when you look at the record that you're looking for, who the beat the ant, and I mm. I want a record where I've accepted anyone that's given to me like I do it. You know, a name comes well, across. If you, get a British, if you get a British title, look, mate. If you end up with a British title shot and you win it, you look. You can look at your record on that and guarantee you it's going to be respectable. Do you know what I mean? You're going uh -huh. to look and say, you know what he's yeah. done, what he's done right the right way. He's tested himself and he's come through, so he deserves to be where he is. It's not by credit; it's by what you've done. So, yep. like, I wish you all the. What channel is this fight on? On there against this, come for this self master title fight. Fight zone. Um, it's a free. It's free. Um, so yeah, you just download it, and it's going to be free on there for the night for people that can't make it. So, what yeah. what time was it? What was it? Um, for people that are going to watch it, mate. Uh, the show's going to be on from. Um, oh, I've got to take your next match. I tell you, I've got a uh, show's going to be on from first bell at seven o'clock. Um, first bell from seven, and it's going to go on till I'll be on last. I'll be on probably around nine, won't I? So, well, yeah, time <coughs> bill on you, yeah, between yeah. nine and ten, as we will be. I wish you all the Andre, mate. I wish you all the luck in the, in the world for your career and, and this fight. I'll be watching it, tuning in, mate, and I'll be rooting for right. it as well. It'll thank be, you, I'll thank get you. you back on, mate, and uh, it'll be as a Commonwealth Silver Master champion, hopefully, mate, definitely. 100%. Now, Andy, mate, and I said it after I watched your boxer uh, Gomez Jr. that like, you've got a big career ahead of you. If you if you stay dedicated, you, you've got the talent to do something really in the sport you actually have. 100%. So, I wish you all the luck in the world, mate, and I'll be watching you a new title fight, mate, and um, I'll be rooting for you. I'll give you a message on the night, so, hopefully. Yeah, and mate, that's definitely. Come back that's why you, I appreciate it. Yeah. I um, appreciate your time, mate, Andy. You're, you're, I really do appreciate your time, mate. You're an absolute gentleman, and, and good luck in your career, pal. No problem at all, mate. I, um, thank you for having us on. I appreciate it. Oh, mate, it's been a pleasure. We're we'll awfully good part of, like I said, you'll be champion, so Definitely. it'll be even better next time. Oh, Top man, mate, really appreciate it. Take thank care, you, mate. Yeah. See you soon, thank mate. You.